So the other day, some drama occurred relating to Vivzy Pop and an ex-friend of hers. Since then, a lot has happened, and there's been multiple popular tweets on the situation. I briefly mentioned this document in my Sally Mae video, but I wanted to give this one its own video, because there's a lot to go over. In this video, I'm going to explain the situation, go through everything, and then give my thoughts at the end. So, on May 9th, 2023, Twitter user Ken Draws Art came out with a 31-page document detailing their negative experiences with Vivzy Pop. Ken was a long-time friend of Viv from 2013 to 2020. They did work such as backgrounds for Vivzy's cancelled Allison project and storyboards for Hasbun Hotel. Before I start, I'd like to say that Ken's pronouns are they, them, so I'll refer to them with those. And lastly, there's 31 pages with lots of Discord DM screenshots. Some of the conversations aren't relevant and contain unnecessary info. So, in each screenshot, I'll just summarize the important info. If you'd like to read the full images, feel free to stop and pause and read them in your own time. So, the tweet says, I ended up compiling my experience with Viv in a PDF for easy sharing. If you'd like to share it or spread it, I don't mind. I'm just tired of being quiet about this. Included in the tweet is a link to a PDF document. The document is structured in a way which is the screenshots of Discord chat logs in the middle, with captions from Ken and additional info around the image. Each section also has a title, so I'll format it that way in the video chapters below, so everyone can follow along easily. So the document starts off with, Who are you? My name is Ken. You may know me as Ken Draw. I used to be a friend of Vivian Medrano. I would share information about my original characters and stories with her, and attempted to help her with any sort of writing blunders and problems she faced. She told me time and time again that she was not particularly good at writing, and I wanted to help, who I thought was my friend. So that was the introduction to the document. Underneath, we see our first Discord screenshot of DMs with Vivzy. These DMs date back to April 2017. So, they start off with Viv asking if she can send some paragraphs from a pitch bible for a project she was working on called Classic. Classic was one of Viv's projects back in 2017, and similarly to Allison, which Ken also worked on, these two projects were cancelled. Viv says she's not a good writer, and asks if Ken can help make it sound better. Ken agrees, and Viv sends over the paragraph, which Ken makes some changes to. Below the Discord DMs, we see some more annotations from Ken. They say, There were other instances like this, but I'm just sharing this one as an example to show how casual and friendly our friendship was, and that she would come to me for help. So the second section is to do with tracing. It starts off with, Instances of tracing. I not only helped her with writing, but art too. There were points where she asked to reference images I drew for her, or referred to and referenced art I had done. On page 2, we have two images this time. The top of the DMs is cut off, so we don't get to see the context. But Viv starts off by showcasing a new character to Ken. Fans will recognize this character as an earlier design for a cherry bomb. Viv says the character is secret and shouldn't be shared. Ken says that's fine and that they will draw her in private. For the second image, we see some cropped DMs. These take place a day later. Ken showcases the drawing they did for Viv, and Viv responds that she loves it. It's important to note that we don't know if this was a paid commission or just a free gift for Viv. Moving on to page 3, we see more Discord DMs. These DMs take place the same day, and Viv asks if she can use the pose from the image for Viv's final reference of Cherry Bomb. Ken agrees. Viv responds she'll credit Ken if she posts it anywhere, to which Ken agrees to that as well. The rest of the DMs are them thanking each other. Underneath we see an annotation from Ken. It says, the trace was used as official art for the character for her model sheet and character image on the wiki. On page 4 we see Viv's reference sheet for Cherry Bomb. This was Patreon exclusive content. On page 5 we see a high resolution image of Ken's sketch. On page 6 we start off with some annotations from Ken. They say, Despite claiming that she would credit me for, essentially, tracing my art, I'd like to state again that I said she may reference the pose. I hardly think tracing my art is the same thing. She has not, to my knowledge, publicly mentioned that I am the original artist. This is a running theme and common trend. The next section of Ken's document is titled, Taking Ideas. Ken says, She would not only trace art that I had drawn for her, but would also steal and repurpose things I told her about, my own concepts and characters. Then feign ignorance and tell folks I was being ridiculous for being rightfully upset at her for taking something I told her in confidence. Underneath we see some Discord DMs. These take place in December 2017. At the top we see Ken ask Viv if Serpentius will have the same design element as Ken's character TF. Basically both characters have a third eye at the top of their head and it's meant to show their true emotions. 
Ken says it's something they're protective of, and they don't want Viv to have the same thing. In these DMs, we see another DM that Ken sent Viv from an earlier conversation. It's a little blurry, but it shows Ken and Viv discussing drawing, and Ken says how their TF character has the aforementioned third eye with the emotions. Viv responds by saying that Sir Pentius' third eye is a manifestation of his thoughts, rather than anything spiritual. She says she added that feature because of other pieces of media that featured it. She says she didn't get the idea from Ken's character, and that the concept has been done before. Viv says it's a little stressful because Ken's messages come across like an accusation. Ken says they aren't accusing Viv, just that they're assuming Viv forgot. They say it's a little uncomfortable because it's similar, but Ken doesn't want Viv to change anything. Viv again says it's a little stressful because Ken's messages seem like an accusation. Ken responds that the hat could be an AI Pench has created, like a character connected to him. Viv responds that it's just a trope she liked in previous things. She does say, however, that if it makes Ken uncomfortable, she can come up with another idea for it. That's the end of the DMs. Underneath, Ken includes an annotation saying, Again, far from an isolated incident, but for the sake of brevity, I'll move on to her not crediting me for my writing involvement in Hasbin and fighting me when I asked to be properly credited. At the bottom, we see the title for the next section. It's called My Involvement in Writing the Hasbin Hotel Pilot. So on page 7, we see two screenshots of DMs. The first image shows messages from May 2017. We see Viv talking about some of the themes of Hasbin Hotel, such as redemption and regret. Ken asks how Viv is planning to do the first app. Viv basically gives a rundown of the pilot. She says how two minor villains, most likely Cherry Bomb and Serpentius have a turf war. This is televised on a news station. This is when Charlie explains her project, which is the Hasbin Hotel. The Discord screenshot ends abruptly, but it's followed by another screenshot. This one shows more DMs, presumably a bit after the previous screenshot. Ken rewords what Viv says and includes an idea of Angel Dust going on a rampage on the TV screen, which makes Vaggy and Charlie mad. At the very bottom, Vivzy says that she likes the idea, but wants the pilot to focus on how Charlie and Vaggy acquire Angel as the hotel's first client. Moving into page 8, we get two more DMs. At the top, we see Ken proposes some dialogue from Angel Dust. Viv responds how she had an idea about that before, but she was thinking of introducing a pimp character, which is obviously Valentino. Viv says the following scene will be the cast in the limo. Viv wonders what the second half of the pilot could be. Ken proposes that a new patron could show up. Viv says maybe. The bottom is cut off, and so is the top of the next screenshot, unfortunately. Viv agrees with whatever Ken said previously. She says the character they discussed is on the same power level of the devil, and they're not super redeemable. The character they're probably talking about is Alistair, but it's hard to tell since the prior context is missing. Ken proposes that the character invests in the hotel, and that they can make a commercial. Viv agrees that this could be a fun idea. At least to me, this commercial idea seems similar to what we saw in the Hell of a Boss pilot so the idea could have been recycled into that. In page 9, we get another two screenshots. At the top, Ken says the floor could fall in with Angel doing a one-liner. Viv says that she wants a reason to include Alistair in the pilot. However, him and other characters are meant to appear later in subsequent episodes, one example being Husk, who is the bartender. Ken proposes that Alistair and Husk are acquaintances and Alistair hires Husk. Ken also proposes Angel Dust, shut up, we are keeping this joke, which ended up in the pilot. Vivzi says after that that Nifty and Mimsy will come in later in their own episode. Ken proposes some more lines. Viv says that Alistair will bring in staff to the hotel, such as Nifty, since she becomes the maid slash cook. Ken says that Alistair could have his own over the top expensive room with a fountain in the center of a deer. Viv says the room would have lots of voodoo stuff, a mini swamp, and Alistair would eat deer by the candlelight. This is a reference to an old art piece Viv made of Alistair in a swamp eating his prey. Ken says an episode could be dedicated to the cost of the place. On page 10, we start off with Ken proposing the and what can you do son, I can suck your dick joke between Alistair and Angel Dust. This obviously made its way into the pilot, except Sun was swapped to Effeminate Fellow. Viv and Ken talk more. Ken says that Angel Dust shouldn't know who Alistair is, so Vaggy has to explain it to him on how Alistair is evil. Viv agrees, and Ken proposes three lines of someone saying they're not involved in politics. So these three things obviously ended up in the pilot. The Angel joke, the politics joke, and Vaggy explaining how evil Alistair was ended up in the pilot. At the top of the second screenshot, Ken asks if Viv is interested in writers for her upcoming projects. Viv says yeah, and that she wants friends to help come up with jokes and strengthen her projects. She says that she can write angst, sad, and romance well, but not comedy. After this, she sends an early shot of some project she is working on. I have no idea what this is from, so if anyone knows, let me know in the comments down below. The next image takes place as day after. Ken says to Viv that they'd be happy to chime in and help. 
Viv thanks them. Viv then sends through a rough timeline for the Halspin pilot. You can pause and have a read if you like, but it's basically identical to what we saw in the pilot. In the next image, Viv asks what writing help Ken could offer. She says that she's working on a rough script. She admits she's only had a collab writing experience on her Timber pilot. Ken responds whatever Viv is comfortable with. Ken says they're good at dialogue and building off reactions. Ken and Viv exchange some sample dialogue. Moving on to page 12, we continue the conversation. Viv and Ken just discuss more scenes. In the next image, Viv sends a chunk of the script. This is basically just an earlier version of Cherry Bomb's Turf War, which is watched by Channel 666 News. What's interesting is this version of the script mentions an armory, an unknown villain, and Cherry Bomb's name is listed as Deza, which was her work in progress name before her character was finalized. On page 13, Viv says she'll make a Google Doc for rough script materials. She says that anyone who helps will be paid. Ken says they'll help whoever they can. Ken and Viv just discuss their writing process a little. At the very bottom, Viv links a Google Doc. The link doesn't work, unfortunately. The next image jumps to May 28th. Viv says that she has some more friends on board to help with the pilot. The day after, Ken says they made some edits to the doc. Viv says she likes the edit to the Deza exchange. At the bottom, Viv says her friends are helping to write jokes and flesh out the dialogue. Ken sends some sort of image, but it's cut off. Underneath the images, we see another annotation by Ken. Ken says, as you can see, I had a hand in many of the jokes in the pilot, as well as introducing plot threads and character introductions. I did this because, at the time, Vivian told me she was struggling and I wanted to help my friend. Moving on to page 14, we enter the next section of the doc. This section is called, her not crediting and slash or avoiding proper credit. The annotation says, a common trend with Vivian is her tendency to not credit. Below is one image. This image takes place on October 2018. The prior context is completely missing, but we see Viv apologize to Ken over something. This was a full year before the has been pilot released, but at the end of the has been pilot, Ken is credited with additional writing, rather than writing. My game theory is that Ken noticed this and asked Viv about it. Viv apologizes to Ken and says that the other writers banged out the script, formatted it, and contributed a ton, whereas what Ken and Viv worked on was a super loose early draft skeleton. Viv had a little team that quote, put the meat and bones on. Viv apologizes again and says that she isn't trying to push Ken's contribution away. Ken responds that personally, they'd lump all the writers together. However, Ken recognizes why Viv feels that the other writers were more professional. Viv responds that it's tricky to lump everyone in for who did what, like how voice actors and board artists contributed lines or jokes but aren't given the writer credit. Viv says that she tried her best to match the contributions to each person. Viv apologizes if her wording is confusing because she's working on a sequence for the day after. Ken says they don't want to keep Viv up if she wants to sleep and that's where the image ends. Underneath is a caption saying, I'm not sure why she does this, but these are far from the only instances. Here's some more. Moving into page 15, we see a conversation from March 2018. Once again, the prior context is missing, but they're discussing how Viv credits stuff on Twitter. Viv says that when she posts snippets, she credits who did what. However, since the post was just a general update for the whole project, she didn't credit anyone. She says if Ken wants explicit credit for every post, she can keep that in mind, but she wasn't not crediting maliciously. I used the Twitter advanced search feature to check what tweet they were talking about. So the tweet is this one where Viv shows a sneak peek of Katie Kiljoy. She says production is going smoothly. I'm in the GMT time zone, so it says 3am March 13th, but in Viv's time zone that would have been the 12th, which is why the Discord DMs show the 12th. An hour and five minutes after, the Hasbun Hotel Twitter quote retweeted the post and credited the artists. So I thought that was a little important to include just to contextualize the argument I'm about to show. So Ken says that Viv should credit everyone because people will assume that Viv does the entire project by herself. Viv says she'd be glad to credit the people who made it if they'd like, but Viv says she's disappointed that Ken articulated it as her being deliberate or unprofessional. Ken says that Viv should jump at the ability to credit people so they get more work. In the next image, Viv reminds Ken that they're being paid for their work. Viv says that other productions don't credit everyone who does everything for little teasers or promotions. Viv says that work is 100% meaningful but she isn't obligated to dedicate half of a promotional post to say who did what. Viv says Ken can ask her if they want to share work they've done and Viv will gladly reblog it, share it and everything. Viv says she's already shared things from Ken before, so she doesn't understand where the hostility is coming from. Viv says it's a job and attacking her is unprofessional and hurtful. She says she's proud of everyone and every animator is going to excitedly post all of their roughs and scenes that got shown and she'll promote all of them. She says she just wanted to tweet something promotional and is sorry if Ken or another artist felt hurt. She just wishes it was expressed to her. 
Ken responds that they are calmly telling her their thoughts. Viv says that Ken's messages came across as hostile. Moving on to page 16, we continue this exchange. By this point, you can tell things have become a bit heated. Ken asks how anything they said is aggressive or hostile, and if so, they can correct their text. Viv says everyone will be credited in the final product, and there's nothing stopping the artists from retweeting the promotional tweet and saying, hey, I made this. Viv says she wants it to be about the product, and then some posts will be about promoting the people working, while others will be about the thing they are making. Ken asks if they want to do a Discord call if Viv thinks their text came off as hostile. Viv says she can VC, however, her roommates and team members are there because she doesn't have a place to be alone at the moment. Ken apologizes and says they're not comfortable talking to strangers or workers that they're not familiar with. Viv says that's fair. She says that what she said above summed it up. Viv provides a bit more clarification on the fact it's a great project. She says if Ken or anyone else had said, hey, this was me, I made this, she gladly would have retweeted them. She continues that if they had done that, it would have made Viv happier due to the excitement for the project. However, she's a little hurt that Ken immediately jumped to conclusions and said they were disappointed in Viv. Viv asks if another artist felt the same way. She again apologizes if that's the case. Ken says there's nothing they can say. Viv asks what they mean. Viv says she can go outside to call now if that would be easier. Ken says there's no need and to never mind the conversation. Viv says she doesn't understand, but all right. Ken apologizes for disturbing her. Viv says she hopes that the project hasn't been soured for them. She says sorry if her words were harsh or emotional because she was caught off guard and didn't expect that kind of response. She says she'll consult with more members of the team to see if that kind of thing bothered them and she apologizes again. She says Ken doesn't have to work on anything else if they're not comfortable with it and just to let her know how much she owes them. Ken asks if Viv is upset with them. Viv says she isn't but she just says that she's a little scared that Ken might think bad of her and the project. The DMs are cut off here. The caption below the image says, As she gained more notoriety and fame, our contact began to lessen. I think she was also upset that I had the gall to ask her for credit for the things I contributed to Hasbun Hotel. Heaven forbid. The next section is titled, Guilting and Pressuring Me to Sign Documents. The annotation says, She contacted me to sign paperwork post-project completion on Hasbun Hotel due to not being thorough enough and properly hiring me or others. I chalk this up primarily to how haphazard and spontaneous the birth of the project was. On page 18 we have one image. These messages take place in May 2020. Ken asks if Viv is pitching Hasbun tomorrow. Viv says that she's been pitching it and finally has a proposal. Ken congratulates her. Viv says she's panicking and that the company, which we know now is A24, would be scared to be sued. She says she's scared because she never sent out a work for hire to her workers or anyone that helped early on. She now knows, however, that there should always be a contract. Viv apologizes again and says it's sudden, but she needs everyone to sign the contract. So before I continue, Basically what's happened is that Viv is sorting out the legal stuff with A24. One of the things is making sure all the past workers or people who helped out have signed contracts regarding things they made for Hasbun Hotel so that Viv has ownership and that they can't pull the rug out from under Viv or A24. It looks a little confusing because from this screenshot it looks like Viv has mentioned this out of nowhere since the image is being shown without context. However, it's pretty clear that Viv and Ken have discussed this previously. It's just that Ken hasn't included these screenshots in the document for some reason. It appears that Ken has been acting slow or unresponsive with signing the contract, which is why this situation is unfolding. I just thought it was important to explain this to you guys, because when myself and others read this document for the first time, it was a little confusing because these images are once again out of context. So Ken responds to Viv and says that they understand and they're just trying to process everything. Viv says that's fair and she's down to do a call to help read and explain everything. Viv also has informed our lawyer to reach out to Ken to explain it as well. On page 19 we see two more images. Ken says that having a lawyer reach out would be helpful since they want to understand the language. Viv says it's a simple contract and asks again if she can just read it through with them. She asks if Ken could possibly sign it tonight. Ken says they're willing to sign it, however, only on the condition that Viv finds and lists every concept they suggested which was used in the Hasbun Hotel pilot and add it to the contract. They want it to be apparent what they're sending away and want to wrap it up as soon as possible. Viv says she's not sure if she can do that because it's so much and might be a nightmare to find. She needs it to be general since that's not how work for hire works, like writing, boarding, creative input. Finding suggestions or concepts is way too broad. The reason the contract has to encompass everything is so that anyone buying the show is at ease. She says she's happy to call and go over it. She says it can't be these little minute details since that's legally not what works. Viv says it's nerve wracking because it reminds her of what Doll Creep did with loopholes around Gigi. Viv apologizes and says Ken isn't trying to do that, but it's just not normal legally. For context on who Doll Creep is, 
Livesey Pop bought a Sparkle Dog adoptable OC called GG from Doll Creep many years ago. Shortly after, Viv fell out with Doll Creep and Doll apparently tried to go after Viv over the credit for it. I covered this situation in my Why Everyone Hates Vivzy Pop video if you'd want to see the whole thing, but after that, Vivzy had to rename GG to JJ and alter her design. It's likely that the doll creep situation was quite traumatic for Viv, and as a result of this, Viv wants to be super 100% legally in the clear when dealing with work, which is why she wants the contract to be simple and not complicated. In the next image, Ken says they want to feel safe. Viv says that the document is to negate any loopholes, keep the IP safe, and not to exploit anyone. Ken says they need to narrow down what she's claiming. Ken says they won't sign an ambiguous contract. Viv says she wants to have a call because she's getting nervous. The two of them have a call that lasted 5 hours. Nothing about the call was recorded or written down in text unfortunately, so we can only hypothesize that the two of them discussed the contract. On page 20, Ken says that they spoke to someone else who understands legal stuff, and Ken makes mention of the role plays they did with the has-been characters. We see something that's censored out, so it's likely a name or personal info. Ken says they started to work on has-been with Viv on May 24th, 2017. They also find some conversation points that were used in the pilot, which they can forward to Viv and the attorney. Ken says they can gather everything and then they'll sign a new updated form. Viv says that they don't use the role plays for anything, but if that's truer to the start of the discussion for the pilot, then that can work. Viv says that role plays won't hold up in court, and she reiterates that she doesn't want to claim any of Ken's things, just what's designated as hers. Ken says they'd like to speak to Viv's lawyer. Viv agrees and says she'll let the lawyer handle it from here on out. Ken says they have some concerns and provides their email for the lawyer. They have some inquiries and says that they're still friends with Viv. Viv says that A24 wouldn't know anything they did privately and that it's just within Hasbin and what they pitched them. Viv says she's not pitching or using anything outside of their own material. Ken asks why their comfort and safety is such a problem. Ken says Viv has an attorney that can talk it through with them and deal with their concerns. Viv says she's going to stop talking because she spent her entire night in the 5 hour discord call trying to explain it and make Ken feel secure, but she doesn't feel hurt at all. Viv says the attorney will put them at ease about this. Viv says that she's hurt, that Ken doesn't trust her because the contract is very clear. Viv says it's only regarding Hasbin and that Ken not wanting to sign it is making her feel like they want to lay claim to her most cherished work, which is scaring and upsetting her. She apologizes and says that she doesn't want Ken to feel like she's not listening to their concerns. She's going to turn it over to the lawyer. Ken asks what time they can contact them because they're available until 5. Viv says the lawyer is busy but will handle it as soon as possible. Ken says that's great and they'll clear their schedule. On page 21, Viv says the lawyer will reach out soon. Viv says she can answer for the lawyer as a middleman but she's nervous in case she says something wrong. Viv was informed by the lawyer that if she reached out to Ken without a lawyer representing them, then it could become an issue unless Ken has legal rep. Ken says their Wi-Fi is cutting out but they'll make the questions as concise and professional as possible. Viv agrees and says she'll pass any questions questions to the lawyer. Ken asks if the date can be updated to May 24th, 2017, since that's the date they started spitballing ideas about Hasbin. The second question is Ken asks if they can attach chat logs to specify their contributions. The chat logs will also include dates and times, so it's more useful. Viv says yep, and she'll forward those. In the next image, Viv says the lawyer revised something, most likely the contract. Viv then sends a message from the lawyer. The lawyer says, Vivian, attached is a redlined version and a revised execution copy. I changed the date and provided that the certificate covers solely those services on Hasbin. I couldn't open the link, but even if I could, the material in the chat log may not cover everything related to this project and would likely cause a problem with the studio. They will find it odd and wonder whether there were issues. There is nothing in the certificate that gives you rights and material that is unrelated to Ken's services on Hasbin. Please assure them that this is the same type of document that all of our writer clients sign on a regular basis and I've never had a problem with a production company or studio using such a document to make a claim to material that was created by the client, but unrelated to the project in questions. Hopefully we can wrap up on this basis. Ken says that this is the verification they needed and they appreciate the clarity. Viv says she's glad it makes more sense. She then sends an image of a document. I assume this is the contract Ken is meant to sign. Moving on to page 22, Viv asks if there's any other concerns or anything Ken needs. That message was on the 12th of March, and Ken responds three days later on the 15th. Ken apologizes for the delay, and they provide an update, saying they're having their own attorney look over the contract. Ken says they were ill with a bug and have been sleeping most of the week, which also explains the delay. Viv says that's fair, and if they have any concerns, the two attorneys can contact each other. Ken apologizes and says that they're sorry for the delay 
delays and that they want no ownership of the has-been IP. Viv says she appreciates it and is glad they have representation. Ken asks if the two of them are cool since they saw posts made by Viv and they worry she might be displeased by Ken's absence. Viv says she's been stressed out lately with her nerves, trying to get this sorted, and she apologises and thanks them for the update. Ken reiterates that they were sleeping during the week and that they're there if Viv wants to talk. In the next image, Viv says again that she appreciates the update and she wants Ken's attorney's details so she can put them in contact with her own attorney. Ken says that they'll get the details tonight. Viv says that's fine and asks if they will represent them. Ken says yes and that's a prepaid legal service. Viv says her lawyer is more than happy to explain it all to Ken. Ken thanks Viv for being patient and says they're just being careful and not withholding anything from Viv. Viv says she appreciates it and is looking forward to an update. The two of them thank each other for being patient. On page 23, we see more DMs that take place the next day. Viv asks if Ken has the contact details for their rep and they can pass it to her lawyer. Ken says not yet because they were going to their mother's legal services, but they might not be able to and they might have to sign up themselves. Viv says Ken should consult their mother if she has to be involved. Ken says their mum is going to get in contact with them tomorrow and they apologise for the delay. Viv says that's fine and her lawyer is happy to alleviate any concerns. Ken says they're a little in the dark and are waiting for clarification. Ken apologises for being cautious but says they trust Viv, they just don't trust legal documents in general. Viv says that's fine and that the majority of people have signed it already. It's just something that she needs from everyone and she's almost got them all. She again says her lawyer can explain anything and that she's happy to wait since it's important. Ken says that they think Viv might be upset with them. They notice that Viv left some sort of Discord group. Ken says they're sorry if Viv wants to distance herself from them. Viv says she just wants to get it handled as soon as possible. The next image takes place two days later on the 18th. Viv starts off saying she wants it to be handled that month, and with the virus, it might take a bit of time for the reps to get in contact. Viv again says most of the team is signed, and that she has Ken's original signed work for hire. They just need the contract about the IP to be signed. Viv hopes they're doing alright. Ken thanks them and says there was a delay because their lawyer wasn't sure who they were so they had to use their dead name. Their family has a family plan so it should be sorted soon. Viv thanks them for keeping her posted. Ken apologises for the delay and says they hope this hasn't caused Viv to dislike them. Viv says it's important and she wants it sorted soon. Viv again reiterates that her lawyer can chat with Ken's lawyer to explain it all. Ken asks if it's a studio Yota form. Viv says it's the same contract form and that the contract was altered after their prior correspondence. Moving on to page 24, Ken says they're still confused and want to know if the contract will include things they talked about prior to Ken being brought on as a writer. Viv says it doesn't encompass everything said between friends. Viv says it doesn't pinpoint certain things, it was just to cover the services of writing and brainstorming that was used in the pilot. Nothing regarding conversations, jokes or role plays between friends. Viv says that it's just so that the project isn't at risk when pitching. Viv says no studio is buying the show, she just wants the ability to work freely on her creation. Ken says they have no interest in taking ownership over Viv's characters. Viv says she appreciates that and just wants everything sorted and comfortable for both sides. Ken says they appreciate everything and are just taking precautions. Viv reiterates what she said before and that her lawyer is ready to schedule anything. On page 25, Ken apologises for not responding earlier since they were sick. Viv says it's fine and life is crazy at the moment. Ken says they feel terrible that Viv is stressed over this. On March 19th, Ken says they talk to an attorney and they'll get the form signed tonight. Viv says that's great and she appreciates it. Ken says one part was confusing to them and they had to get it explained. Viv said yep and it's not anything bad and she's glad it makes more sense now. Ken sends over what appears to be the document. Unfortunately, it's in really low res so we can't see what's been said. Viv thanks them and clarifies a little on why she needed it signed. Ken agrees and says they just wanted to make sure the legal stuff made sense. Ken says that they had no desire to own Viv's characters and they were just worried about whether conversations would be included. Viv says that's fine and it was just to make sure the IP was safe. Ken says that they hope Viv doesn't hate them for being cautious. The DMs are cut off so we don't know what's said after. On page 26, we get some annotations from Ken. They say, it took me a total of 16 days to sign the documentation she presented. I was not only sick, but seeking legal counsel and aid. I was trying to be thorough and make sure I was protected and wasn't sending away the rights to my original work or anything I had told her in confidence about my own characters and projects. The next section is titled, Defaming me and attempting to get me blacklisted. Ken says, despite others taking longer to sign the paperwork and other individuals getting to her later than even I was. I know of two individuals who signed the paperwork even later than me. She still went on to other parties and began to try and blacklist me behind the scenes, spreading a very vitriolic and disgusting narrative while also misgendering me. I've been openly out and going by they them since Vivian and I began talking in 2012. 
There is no excuse for this other than blatant transphobia and a disgusting jab at my person and identity. Trigger warning, acephobia, transphobia, false accusations of grooming and predation in order to vilify and isolate me from our peers. On page 27, we see some DMs between Viv and an unknown individual. This person basically screenshotted them all and sent them to Ken. What's odd is that some messages are censored while others aren't. On March 14th, Viv says that the person should unfollow Ken and that she'll reach out to most of her mutuals. She says that Ken is totally an abuser. She says she stood by Ken when they were called out, but Ken's recent actions have awakened her to what she's endured. She says she's just warning them in case they've tried to or done anything to them. So just for a little context, in 2019 some Tumblr users came out with a document against Ken Draws, accusing them of harassment and a number of other things. Ken made a rebuttal shortly after. This is what Viv is referring to because she endorsed Ken back then during the drama and she received some flack for doing so. Viv says Ken is a monster. She says they're refusing to sign the has-been chain of title which means the show's future could be in their control. Viv says she's ready to take them to court. She's been trying to avoid that, but they're a monster. She says she's known them since she was underage and that they've been a horrible influence. She can't believe she let them under the project or bully her for the writing credit. The unknown individual says, They were also the one who got pissed you didn't credit them in a Twitter post, right? Viv says she's been trembling for days and they're obsessed with credit. On page 28, these DMs continue. Viv says that Ken went silent after Viv's lawyer tweaked the contract for them. Ken also wanted the site chat logs and role plays, even though they were nothing of substance. Viv says that Ken thought the studio would want ownership of the role plays and the characters, even when it was solely has been. The anonymous individual said that Ken always gave them bad vibes and that they would be happy to unfollow them. Viv says Ken is insane and she feels bad for not standing by the victim previously. The anonymous user says it's easy to not see red flags when you're friends with someone. Viv says Ken is holding the project hostage. On page 29, Viv says that Ken, someone called Ray, and another individual are the last three to sign the document. I'm not sure what individual Viv is referring to, but I'd assume it's Ray. Viv says that Ray confronted Viv about character similarities, which is something Ken had done previously. The anonymous individual says, Jesus Christ. Viv says that Ken came after her over Pentius's hat during production. Viv says that Ken grooms younger artists who look up to them by controlling who they know and what they draw. On page 30, Viv says that Ken is narcissistic and she questions why she let them on her project to begin with. Viv says she loved their work since she was a kid and Ken used that to groom her. She said she feels sick and angry with herself. The user says for Viv not to blame herself. Viv said she's been talking to different people recently and has a healthier friend group, which is why she picked up on past manipulation. The user says husband will be safe and Viv responds that it hopefully will be alright. However, if she has to, she might have to go to court. Underneath an annotation says, other parties involved ask to remain anonymous. And Ken follows up by saying, while she was spreading this disgusting narrative about me and the situation behind my back, to my face, these were the conversations that she and I were having. On the final page of the doc, we see another image. These messages take place in July 2020. The prior context is missing, but we see Viv talk about a commission. Ken asks if Viv is okay because they noticed she unfollowed them and everything, so Ken suspects Viv might dislike them. Ken says if that's the case, then they apologize for hitting her up at all. Viv says she's been doing well and that she doesn't dislike them. She's just been going through a lot in life and is moving on. Ken says no worries and that they wanted to be sure that they didn't do anything harmful. Viv admits that the waiting stressed her out, but it wasn't intentional. She says she's had a lot of stress and is working to cope better with her anxieties. Ken says they understand and if Viv gives the word, they can give her some space. Viv thanks them for understanding. A month later, on August 7th, Ken congratulates Viv on has been being picked up. Viv thanks them. And that's the end of the DM exchanges in this doc. Underneath, Ken added an annotation that reads, I had no interest, nor do I want to own Hasbin Hotel or any of her creations. I have my own work, my own projects, my own characters. I did not help her for clout, for prestige, or to take ownership of the Hasbin IP. I was only thorough and taking my time because I wanted to be sure I was protected and knew what I was signing. Taking time to feel safe and seek legal consultation and knowledge should not be punished or used against someone. The final section is titled, Why Come Forward? Ken concludes the document by saying, Above all else, I'm interested in bringing attention to the negative actions of Vivian Medrano. She has not only hurt me, but others, and I want to lend my voice so that people know that this is not okay and that they are not alone. I felt alone, crazy, and like I did something wrong. I was made to feel like I was a friend and that I mattered, only to be discarded when I was no longer of use to her. I kept quiet because I felt isolated and like it was something she only chose to do to me. I also felt like I couldn't come forward. Vivian has a large following as well as the resources to defend herself. I do not. 
I am only armed with the truth. After learning that she had done this to other people and has made others feel isolated, alone, crazy and defamed, I knew I had to lend my voice to ensure that this would no longer happen. So that's all of Ken's Google Doc. One other ex Spindlehorse artist, E.L. Gilbert, quote retweeted Ken's document. They said, when Ken told me about these things, it was mortifying. I completely understood why they kept silent though. Unfortunately, this matches all too well my experiences with Spindle and Viv, especially after leaving. I don't feel like talking about it, but it was bad. Full support to Ken. Aaron Frost also shared Ken's statements. So with the entire document covered, I think it's about time that I give my thoughts on everything. Overall, I feel like the document showed the disintegration of a friendship gradually over time. There is some valid points made, which I'll discuss later, but there's also a number of issues with the document which I'll point out first. The first issue, which you've probably picked up on if you stuck with me this far, is the fact that the majority of the screenshots are presented without context. There is huge gaps with dates between messages, and it just makes the entire document look like it's cherry-picked. Many of the messages start or end abruptly, and we have no idea what happened before or after the exchange. We've seen in situations like with Quiet or Pyrocynical that providing out-of-context messages is a bad idea and damages the overall validity of your argument. One example which illustrates this is when Ken was arguing with Viv about credit under a sneak peek. Starting page 15, we see Ken annotate this section by saying Viv refuses to credit people. The top of the exchange is cropped, so we have no idea what was said. But from the context cues, it looks like Ken messaged Viv about credit under a post because they weren't credited. We see the two of them argue back and forth, and Viv clarifies that if Ken had just messaged her or quote retweeted the post, she would have credited them. At the end of the argument, Ken probably realised they were making a huge fuss over nothing and apologised to Viv. What Ken failed to include in the doc is that one hour after the tweet was made, Viv quote retweeted the post on the Hasbin Hotel Twitter and credited Ken on the other artists. This is conveniently missing from the document and makes Viv look worse than she actually is. If Ken wanted to create a proper document, then in their examples they should have included the entire conversation from start to finish, censor out personally identifiable information, and then just annotate the important segments. This would clear up the issues with the cropped out of context messages and it would solve the issue of the dates being all over the place. The section about tracing is particularly interesting. In the messages we see Viv discussing Cherry Bomb and Ken says they'll draw her. Ken sends over the image and Viv says she loves it so much that she wants to use it as a pose for Cherry's final reference sheets. Ken agrees. Viv says she'll credit Ken if she posts it anywhere and Ken agrees to that as well. Underneath, Ken includes an annotation saying that Viv traced it and includes the image of the character sheet. If we take a look at the two images, it's fairly obvious that Viv heavily referenced the original image. I wouldn't call it a one-to-one -one trace, but they're incredibly similar. So Ken's first argument is that Viv traced their art. Why didn't Ken articulate this to Viv at the time? If Ken had a problem with how Viv referenced their image, Ken should have told Viv that. If you don't tell someone the issue, there's no way they'll know. I'm certain that if Ken told Viv they weren't comfortable with how similar the reference was, Viv would have obliged and changed it. There's no point telling us this six years later. The second thing is that Ken says that Viv didn't credit them, but provides no elaboration. After doing research, I find the two times that Viv posted the image. Both times they were on Patreon. The first time she posted Cherry's sheet was on January 16th, 2018 and she posted a second version on September 7th, 2018. Viv didn't credit Ken in both posts. The way Viv credits stuff on her Patreon is when an image or sheet is made by someone else, she'll credit them. But if she herself made it, she won't include any credit. What I personally think happened is that Viv used Ken's image as a reference since she had permission and since the image was posted eight months later on her Patreon, she simply forgot to credit Ken. She made it herself and as per what she normally does, she didn't credit herself. However, the unfortunate reality is that she forgot to credit Ken. As far as I'm aware, I haven't seen Viv share the image anywhere else. The annotation under the Discord DMs said the trace was used for the model sheet and the character image on the wiki. I'm not sure why the wiki is mentioned, but Ken probably thought that the wiki is run by Viv or a member of the team, which is false. I've mentioned the wikis previously and I always warn people that they frequently contain leaked content. I checked the Hasbun Hotel wiki and the image is there, however it was uploaded by some random individual, not Viv or a member of Spindlehorse. So I don't understand why this was included. Ken probably thought that Viv posted it onto the wiki without credit, however they aren't aware that the image was leaked without Viv's consent and uploaded on there. It's not Viv's fault and she shouldn't be held accountable for it. Overall this tracing point is quite minor. Yes, Viv should have credited Ken in the two Patreon posts, however it being on the wiki has nothing to do with Viv, and part of the blame is on Ken for not articulating to Viv that they weren't happy with the reference. In the Taking Ideas section of the doc, Ken brings up Serpentius' eye hat being similar to one of Ken's characters. 
They've argued that it's a common trope and she didn't copy Ken's design. Ken then proposes the concept of the hat being like an AI or something that Pench has created, like a best friend, so that it's similar enough to Viv's design but different enough from Ken's. Viv responds that if it makes Ken uncomfortable, she can change the character to something like that. So from the DMs, it looks like the situation is resolved. Ken was worried about something asked Viv about it. Viv clarified that she wasn't copying him and said if Ken wants, she can alter it. If there was messages about this situation after, we can't see them because once again, they end abruptly and the context is missing. This point seems really weak and I'm not sure why it was included. The next section of the doc, the reading section, also has its own variety of issues. At the bottom of the section, Ken says how they had a hand in many of the jokes in the pilot, as well as introducing plot threads and character introductions. What's interesting is that Ken just dumped a bunch of conversations with Viv discussing the pilot. However, Ken doesn't make specific mention of what segments they created. That's because if you have a read through everything, once again, due to the cropped screenshots, it's incredibly difficult to discern which sequences Ken created and which Viv made. From what I've gathered, the only points Ken came up with were as follows. Alistair showing up at the hotel during the pilot after seeing the news broadcast. Alistair being the one he hired Husk and Nifty. Angel Dust's We Are Keeping This Joke. Angel Dust's I Can Suck Your Dick Joke. Vaggy introducing Alistair as an evil overlord to Angel Dust. Angel Dust saying he's not big on politics. And lastly, Alistair saying if he wanted to hurt anyone, he would have done so already. Everything else was either things we can't prove Ken created or things Viv had made which Ken just reworded. Viv sent Ken a Google Doc containing rough script materials which we don't have access to since the link is dead but we don't know what was contained. Ken could have done more work but this is never mentioned in the doc. From looking at everything, Ken definitely provided some ideas for the pilot which ended up in the final thing. However, the doc phrases it in a way as if Viv didn't credit Ken at all which is false. If we take a look at the credits in the pilot, we see Viv as the creator, director and producer. Immediately after it says written by Dave, Raymond and Vivian. Right after we see the script doctor is listed as Dan and Ken is credited as additional writing. So Ken was credited in the pilot. The Google Doc makes no mention of this. In the subsequent section of the doc titled Her Not Crediting and Slash Or Avoiding Proper Credit, Ken shows an exchange with Viv. Once again, the top of the exchange is cropped and starts abruptly. But from what the DMs show, it's likely that Viv showed the end credits of the pilot. And once Ken saw they were credited with additional writing, they messaged Viv and started an argument. Ken probably asked Viv's thought process behind listing Dave, Raymond and herself as writers while giving Ken the credit as additional writing. Viv said that she gave those two the writer credit because they banged out the script, formatted it and focused it. She says that the stuff she did with Ken was a super early draft and she acknowledges that Ken did help but it was when the story was in its loose skeleton stages. She says Raymond and Dave put the meat and bones on the script which is why they had the writer role. Ken responds that personally, they'd lump all the writers together under one credit. However, they understand why Viv feels like the other two did more professional work. Viv continued by explaining how voice actors and board artists contributed lines or jokes which ended up making it into the final thing. However, they weren't listed as a writer. She says it's hard to draw the lines on what was made by who, since writing is the most collaborative part of the project. Ken responds to this by saying they don't want to keep Viv awake, and the DMs abruptly end. We have no idea what was said after this exchange. So, this is similar to the previous situation, where Ken came to Viv about an issue. Viv elaborated and clarified that it isn't a big issue. Then Ken agrees, and that's it. Yet, in this document, Ken basically uses these situations to spin a narrative that Viv robs off other people. This argument was over semantics, and in my opinion, I think additional writing was a valid credit for Ken. As far as I'm aware, one of the writers, Dave, helped out significantly with the project, was seen at the IRL unveiling of the pilot, and was also with Viv on multiple honeycasts and livestreams on her channel. Ken wasn't present in any of these. The way it looks is that Ken provided some ideas and jokes during world plays on Discord when the script was super early and then Viv and the other two writers took these early concepts and made the final script out of it. Additional writing looks like a suitable credit and if Ken wasn't credited at all then maybe a case could be made against Viv but that isn't what happened. The section about the legal stuff and signing the contract had a significant number of issues as well. At the start of the DMs, we see Viv bring up how they need Ken to sign a contract. In the way the DMs are presented, it looks like Viv brought this up out of nowhere after Ken congratulated her for pitching Hasbin. However, from the wording and the annotation later in the document from Ken, it's pretty clear that Viv had informed Ken about the contract that needed signed before this exchange. For the next seven days, we have this long, drawn-out mess where Ken repeatedly says they're unsure about the contract and are scared to sign it. Viv responds to this by doing a five-hour Discord call with Ken on the 11th of March. Even despite this five-hour Discord call, Ken still had reservations regarding it. This back and forth occurred for the next eight days until the 19th when Ken finally signed the contract. So what we have is that it took Ken 16 days to sign everything. It makes total logical sense for Viv to be stressed over the situation, 
and you can clearly see this by reading the messages. As time goes on, Viv gets more and more worried. Even after tons of attempts by Viv to get it sorted, Ken refuses to budge. The worst of it all is that Ken only attempted to get legal representation after the 5 hour discord call. Personally, if I had to sit through a 5 hour call with someone to explain something, then right after the call I went back to saying the same stuff, I'd be at wit's end as well. During one image, Viv illuminates precisely why it's important to get the legal contract sorted. According to Viv's lawyer, including random messages about Discord roleplays will make the studio feel off-put. If Viv is pitching a project to a major studio, the studio needs to make sure Viv owns everything before any work can begin. If a piece of the project is uncertain in regards to ownership, it puts the entire deal at risk. Although Ken had some IRL issues to deal with, which slowed the process down, I believe Viv was well within her right to be worried especially since every other team member had already signed the contract except for three individuals who were more or less dragging their feet. Viv mentioned this in DMs to another individual and said that Ken refusing to sign the contract was putting the entire project in danger and if Ken continued, Viv would be forced to sue them in order to get full control of her IP. Ken said in an annotation that two other individuals took longer to sign the contract than Ken did. So basically Ken is saying that it's unfair for Viv to have pressured them when two other people also didn't sign it. My answer to this is that from the exchanges we've seen so far, Ken seems like a difficult person to work with. You can clearly see how in 2017 things were amicable. However, by late 2018, their relationship had deteriorated. I verified this by checking Ken's Patreon Discord server, and Viv's last message in it was on the 13th of March 2018. If you check the dates of the argument where Ken goes after Viv about crediting, those messages occurred a day before, on the 12th of March. So, at least to me, it's very clear that the writing credit situation was the straw that broke the camel's back. It was a repeated pattern of behaviour where Ken started an argument with Viv over something. This happened again on the 12th, Viv was fed up with it, and from that point onwards, their friendship was over. Viv then left left Ken's Discord server shortly after. The next time they messaged was when Viv needed the contract stuff sorted in 2020. The very final messages illustrate this, with Ken confirming that Viv unfollowed them on everything at some point before 2020. The final section worth mentioning is the DM exchanges between Viv and another individual. We don't know who they are, but it's clear that it's someone who is friends with Viv. Viv didn't realise they were on Ken's side and vented to them about Ken. This user then sent these DMs to Ken. Underneath, Ken says that the leaker's username has been censored out to remain anonymous. This makes logical sense. However, for one image only, both the messages and the person's username are censored. I can understand censoring the person's name if they want to be anonymous, but it makes no sense to censor out both their text and their username for one specific image. From what the user says, it looks like they were on Viv's side and agree with them, even saying in one message that Ken has always given them bad vibes. I don't know whether this person is a turncoat or whatever, but it seems weird for them to badmouth Ken to Viv, and then after, turn around and send these to Ken. One thing about the DMs that I do disavow though is Viv's language. Viv repeatedly used the incorrect pronouns, and I think that was not fair at all. It's very clear that Viv and Ken's relationship deteriorated, but I don't think using the wrong pronouns is a morally good thing to do. I think Viv was in the right to vent to this person about Ken, since they obviously thought the conversations would be in private and not leaked to Twitter, but I do think that regardless of her opinion of someone, we should be considerate and use their preferred pronouns. I don't agree with Ken labelling these DMs as Viv rushing to blacklist people. This terminology was used by Aaron Frost previously, and during that situation, Viv didn't blacklist Aaron that time either. Viv was clearly just venting to a supposed friend and letting them know about someone who they had grievances with. Before I wrap up the video, I wanted to bring my friend Iox on to give his thoughts on the situation. Thanks A for letting me come on. To be honest, taking a step back and watching all of this drama unfold, everything from Ken Draw's side really comes off as very spite-driven and serves as a good reminder of how mixing business and friends can almost ruin both. I can't honestly imagine the level of stress Viv was going through trying to put together a life-changing pitch, and someone who you thought was your close friend started putting that in jeopardy for absolutely no reason. Even just reading through the DMs Ken draws tried to cherry-pick, they come off as very cold and so manipulative. We see time and time again that they start trying to nitpick Viv, and Viv tries her best to communicate and resolve these issues, only to be met by one-word answers and stonewalling-like behaviour. Keep in mind that Ken draws is in their 30s. This kind of incompetence is mind-boggling, and to try and portray themselves as anything but an asshole is pretty crazy. Communication is key, especially in this kind of space, and if you can't, this business isn't for you. Another interesting point to all this is how closely Erin Frost seems to be linked into it, as she immediately signal boosted the post along with all the other Vivzy Pop detractors, clearly trying to grasp onto any straws they can get. In conclusion, I think this drama has been incorrectly spun into a false narrative. Personally, I think that none of this should have been made public, since Erin Frost still has Vivzy 
Pop added on Discord, despite all the things she's done. I'm going to assume Ken still has Viv added as well. Personally, if I was Ken, I would have just messaged Viv and asked for an apology, or try to work out something amicably. I believe creating this document was a huge mistake, and as I pointed out throughout this video, there's numerous flaws with it. It basically just shows the deterioration of a friendship that's been publicly published online for everyone to see. The one good thing out of this situation, however, is it gave us a good look at the design process of Haspen Hotel. We were able to see how some parts of the pilot were created, and how some of the jokes we know and love started out as Discord messages. So that's everything. If you have any thoughts on this drama, I'd love for you to leave them in the comments down below. Special thanks to Iox for taking part in this video. Thanks for watching.